guys this is the part two of the um, series that I just made on uh, building the micro long range drone the Diaton Roma L4 uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I um, flush the flight controller with iNav because this is going to be an iNav build so in order to do that you have to go to iNav but first uh, because the flight controller is um, flushed with beta flight by default or it came with a beta flight pre-installed already so we need to go to beta flight so we can get it into defu mode or another uh, option is you will have to press the boot button which is on the flight controller before you plug the usb so that is also another way of getting into defu but the easiest way is you have to plug the flight controller to your laptop so let's plug it in now see so it's pre-configured with better flight by default and all you have to do is just um, you need to go to the CLI tab and save all your settings on this flight controller just in case you have to go back to better flight if you don't like I know then at least you saved all the settings which is uh, by default configured on this flight controller so in order to do that you go to the CLI tab then you need to type diff all and then press enter so that will that will uh, bring all your settings and configuration in this flight controller so after you <clears throat> did the default, you just have to go and save to file. So in this tab here, press save to file, and then you will have to rename it like uh, Diatone Roma L4 default. All right, so you just have to go to, in my case, I will have to go to Beta Flight, Roma L4, and then save it from here. So that is all your configuration saved into that file. So when you want to go back to Beta Flight, you can just easily go to the CLI tab and then load from file. So like, let's say we have to load that uh, default configuration into beta flight into fresh installed beta flight you just have to press load from file and then look for your uh, like diatom roma l4 default so that will load all the default configuration into the flight controller okay so um without further ado let's go ahead and get this flight controller into the if you mode in order to do that in the cli tab the same in the cli tab you have to type BL for an in beta flight so that means it's in a bootloader mode and then after writing BL just have to press enter and your flight controller will go to the if you mode so as you can see here it's already on the if you mode so that will be ready for flushing any uh, flight firmware so after the flight controller is on the if you mode you can now go to iNav and see here on iNav it is also saying that you are already on the if you mode meaning you can now install or flush the iNav firmware into your drone so to do that you have to go to the firmware flasher then you need to choose your board so we know that our board is the hack rc just have to scroll all the way down these are all the these are all the flight controllers that is supported with i know so not all flight controllers are being supported but it's just a list these are the list 
of flight controllers. So before you plan to build an INAV drone, you need to make sure that your flight controller is being supported here in the list. So that's what I did before I decided to uh, buy the flight controller. Okay, so let's just find the hack RC. So this one. So this is what the target for INAV on this uh, flight controller, the hack RC F411D. Okay, once you choose the board below here in this drop down, you can choose your uh, INAV uh, version. So the latest stable is the 6.1.1. Okay, so after that, you just have to leave this on default, full chip erase, and then looking down here, you need to load the firmware online. And then it will load the firmware for your board. So here, you can see here, the target is HackRC F411D, and then the INAB 6.1.1. Right, so these are all the release nodes. If you want to read here, right? and I've already read all this. So once it's loaded, you just have to flush the framework. And now it's going to be erasing. It's erasing whatever is written on the flight controller. And after it is being erased, now it's going into flushing. So it's flushing the new firmware into the flight controller so it will take a few minutes to finish flushing and once it's finished you should be able to see here the communication port of the flight controller if it's uh, successfully flushed see so it says programming successful and so i told you it changed here from the fuel to the communication port of the flight controller which is com3 so now uh, we already flushed into the flight controller we have to connect it okay so connect your flight controller so initially you will be prompt to choose uh, the best settings default settings for whatever um, drone you have or a fixed wing or a rover or boats so this is the first thing that will pop out after you flushed your a flight controller with INAV firmware. So in our case, because this is the 4-inch drone, we will have to choose the 3-inch, uh, which is, uh, anyway, 5 inches closer, but 3 inches closer, because this is 4 inches in between this. But uh, I will probably choose 3-inch propellers for this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and click that. So it will save all the default settings for the three inch drone. Um, it will take a few seconds or minutes to get it. Then it will reboot after it is saved. Right, so um, after it was loaded, it will go back to this page, then you have to reconnect it again. Um, it's failed the connection, I don't know. So if it happens to you, if it fails, all you have to do is just unplug the USB here and then plug it again. Okay, so once it's done, you have to press connect again but for some reason it wasn't connected. I'm not sure. Ah, because it is open on the battle flight. You just have to close this one and then reconnect. There you go. So and make sure that you don't have any uh, software or app opened, which can also automatically open your your communication port for the flight controller. All right, so yeah, so this is the page of the first page, the setup page. So as you can see, if we move the drone, you will have the drawing or the illustration on the setup tab. If you tilt the drone forward, it will 
tell the drone core if you turn up it will tell up let's just reset the z-axis first okay so uh, yeah if you go up it will go up if you go down tilt down it will tilt down if you tell on if you roll on the left it will go on the left also roll on the right all right so and then you to left and you to the right so that means our drone is uh, already configured the accelerometer uh, by default with the I know on our chosen board but still we have to calibrate it we have to go through all the stubs here as necessary after the flashing so in the setup page yes we all have this and then next one is calibration page all right so in this page you need to calibrate your accelerometer okay so to calibrate you have to press this one and press ok and then press it again and it will detect the position of your drone just like this it's on lying flat on the belly and it shows that it's lying flat on the belly and you have to go all the six um, axes or six sides of the drone so you have to calibrate it properly okay so let's go and go on the next one okay so that's all done calibration of the accelerometer done although we have different result on the figures here but let's go back and check on the setup page see if the drone is still on the right movement if we tilt up yeah let so it tilts up tilt down roll on the left roll on the right yo to the left yo to the right so that means the the accelerometer the board alignment is is good uh, because if we have a problem with the board alignment or the calibration if you tilt up it will go on different direction instead of tilt down it might be tilting up or going roll on you but on this one it's moving the way the actual drone is moving which means that is a good setup already for the accelerometer all right so next one uh, calibrate compass so we don't have the compass yet because it's not powered uh, we will power it using the vfly gps mate okay so it will power up the gps at the same time it will also power the compass okay let's move on to the mixer and the mixer tab this is the way how you set up your motors so by default it's already set up for you by INAV but in my case uh, yeah this is multi-rotor good and there are other options here if you are if you want planes rover or boat but in this case we are using multi-rotor or the quad but for me I would prefer to have my rotation as you can see here it's it's uh, the rotation of the front motors is inwards or in all right so props in so we call it props in configuration um for me i will prefer to have it props out so in order to do that you just have to click this which will tell you it the reverse motor direction or props out configuration all right so the the figure also changes when you click this so this is already props out props out configuration and after that you just have to press save and reboot then it will reboot into the setup page again once it's finished okay so after the mixer we have to go to the the output page so let's go to the output page and this page unlike better flight i know will not um, enable the motor after it's flashing for for you know i think it's this is for safe safety purposes so you have to enable it manually 
in the output page. So in this one here, you have to enable motors and you have to choose which DSHAT protocol you're going to be using. In my case, I will be using DSHAT 300 and the servo. Just disregard this one because we will not be using servo on our build. Uh, stop motors on low throttle, so we will not uh, enable this because on quads, we will have to uh, have the motors spinning even if in low throttle. The idle power is 15%. I think this is way too high. I would probably take it down to 10%. And the motor scale is one that is good, which, which means 100%. And the numbers of motor holes. So this is very important if you miss this one because the number of motor poles for like three inch, four inch, they are, uh, they have 12 poles or 12 magnets so in order to check double check that you just have to count how many magnets uh, your motor has so if it has 12 motors you will have to put 12 number of motor poles here if it has 14 magnets you will have to put 14 on your number of motor poles so that's why it says here number of motor poles or number of magnets okay so in my case this is a 1404 it has 12 magnets so I will have to change it to 12 uh, reversible motors no I will not play with reversible this is not a 3d quad this is just an ordinary uh, a flying quad and yeah after that you just have to press save or you can press save and reboot if you like so just you it will just take a few seconds to get it back to uh, the setup page again but yeah it's better to save and reboot than forget to save it next thing is you go to the ports tab so here you have to configure your like the receiver your gps your vtx to which uart you did install it so on this case in my case my UART1 has the serial, so I will have to disable MSP in UART1 and put serial RX or a serial receiver, which is the ALRS. In UART2, I put my Voxnail avatar. So for this, we will have undo it. Voxnail avatar is on this side. You just have to scroll down, and that will be using the MSP display port. So DJI Voxnail is the zero they are using MSP DisplayPort for VTX to be able to display OST to your goggles. And on the soft serial one or the UART3 on this FC is where I installed my GPS. So I have to put GPS on this. Um, I will have to put that on 11, 115, 200 baud rate for now. If we are having issue to detect GPS, then we might have to play around with the baud rate. All right, but for now, we'll just leave it by default and then we have to press save and reboot. I should be able to detect the compass and the GPS now because we already configured it properly to the um, port stop. But, uh, Apparently, it was not detected. So we have to move on to the next tab, which is the configuration. So, yeah. Okay, so we have to go to the configuration tab. So, yeah, there you go. So that's why we, we did not see the compass and the GPS and the barometer here, because on these sensors and page, the magnetometer or the compass is none and the barometer is none so we have to manually enable it if you don't know if you know what type of compass or barometer you have on your fc you can just have to choose here on this list but if you don't know you just have to put auto so i will just put auto there the i2c speed I would say i 2 c speed, I will have to put 8,000 kilohertz here. Um, 
yeah, it is suggested to switch to 800 kilohertz in case of multi router. So we'll just put 800 kilohertz here. Um, I will not touch here for now the mug alignment, but we will have to do the mug alignment later. So here, enable CPU serial ports. Yes, GPS for navigation. You have to enable it. GPS for navigation, telemetry, reversible. Black box flight data controller. Yes, enable it. Enable motor and servo. OSD, profile selection. So these are all the options that you can uh, choose in order to have uh, your flight controller properly configured. So, but we will just have to do the basic for now. Right, so we have save and reboot. We should be able to see the barometer and the compass and the GPS now on the tabs here. There you go. So the magnetometer and the barometer is now lighted blue which means it's already detected by the INAV. But the GPS is not yet. I don't know why. Let's go to, oh, there you go. So GPS is already live, but it's red. Um, all right, so moving on to the fail safe tab. Just like the beta flight, you have the drop, land, and RTH. So in my case, I will have to choose RTH because we already have the GPS um, installed. Okay, right, so on the pitch tuning tab, um, in the pitch tuning tab, this is where you want to tune your quad, like the pit gains. By default, this is the setup for uh, 3 inch, so we will not, we will just leave it by default. The rates and expo, I'll just leave it default. Filters, leave it on default and the mechanics. So for now we will just leave this um, on the default configuration. So we move to advanced tuning. This is still re uh, referred to the tuning tab, so we will just skip that. Programming, we will skip it. Now we have to go to the receiver tab. So in the receiver tab, on the receiver tab you have to choose because we are using ALRS, that we will have to choose CRSF here, okay? So if you're using Crossfire and ALRS, you have to choose CRSF as your serial receiver provider. Okay, and then just leave it default and save and reboot. Okay, so let's go ahead. After we set the receiver, we have to go to the mode tab where we have to, we have to uh, use the controller to set up our modes for this uh, quad. So you have to add the, the arm, set it to auto and then click your, so this is my arm switch, All right? And then save it. Uh, for some reason, it just keep on telling me sensor lost. I don't know. Try to disconnect. Turn it again. I don't know what happened here. Oh, uh, because I because I click this hide and use button and I'm not finish it. Okay, so back back here. Pre-arm, I'm not using pre-arm, so angle mode, I'm using angle mode, so auto, and then flip your box switch. Okay, that will automatically choose which channel is that you're flicking. And then just have to slide it, and put it back here. Horizon, I'm not going to use horizon for now. And now position hold, up to hold. Okay, so let's put up to fold here on this channel eight and slide it. All right, go back. Then, so I think that is all. We have the fail safe. Where is it? 
No, it's not here yet. Oh, there you go. So this is the return to home or the GPS rescue. So you have to add range, set an auto, and then then uh, flip your controller, slide your tab, and then we're back. All right. So and then save. Don't forget to save. Otherwise, when you go to another tab, it will not be saved. So let's go back to receiver and see if our receiver is controller is working. Okay, drops overall pitch. Okay, so everything. So everything is working. Let's go back to the mode tab. Okay, so now we can hide the unused modes. So these are all the modes that we add to the drone. But later on, you can add uh, as, as much as you can, depending on what kind of uh, flight you will have to uh, use for flying your drone. But basically, this is just what we need for now. All right, so let's go ahead and put this on the side. <coughs> Adjustments, we didn't need it. We will skip it. We've got GPS. So GPS, uh, I will use GPS Galileo satellites. Then you blocks protocol, yeah, that's good. So save and be good. Okay, so we should be able to see GPS there. And once it's properly configured, on this page, you should be able to see messages. This should start to register numbers. Okay. But for now, it is not. Oh, there you go. So, it's total messages 63. See, there you go. You start uh, seeing messages. That means. Your GPS is properly uh, configured. So let's go to the magnetometer tab. This is very important here, you know, because you need to orient your compass properly in order to have in order to have it function properly too. Um, for now, this is. <coughs> The orientation of this compass is 270 degrees flip. So if you look in this um, figure here, that will tell you your compass orientation based on your GPS. So in our case, this is different. So you noticed the, I don't know how to, there you go. So, okay, so if you can see, it is different than what we have here. See the, the this little circle here? It is on the forward end, but ours, if you see, if you look here, it is on the back end. That means we need to change the configuration of the orientation of the compass to, let's try the 90. Oh, so it's not. At the 90, it's, it's on the other side. Let's try 180. No, it's also not 180. So we need to flip it, 90. Okay, so that should look like Look like it. But um, I was looking on the. Yeah, so that should look like this one. 90. Yeah, so see the. The wires or the connector is on this side here, right on at the back of the drone, which is exactly what we have here. 
you can see the the plug or the wire is at the the forward end of the drone going there and also in here as you can see yeah right so that is how we uh, configure the compass and also it's not only that see here the compass in the drawing or the figure is lying flat but ours is not it's like uh, 20 degrees or 25 degrees inclined so in order to change that you have to go here under roll or is it under roll i don't know let's try no it should be in the pitch axis yeah on the pitch axis uh, you need to slide this one to like 20 and when you slide it you will see that the compass and the drawing is also tilting so depending on how much degree you are tilted on your actual drone you need to set up this in my case i think this is 20 and then just save and reboot so that is your compass aligned and mission control after that you just have skip mission control we will discuss it in later videos it's this is this is a different video osd yes uh, we need this to configure the walk snail avatar uh, it will take some time to load the osd page but let's just be patient All right, so this is the OSD page of the iNav. On this side here, as you can see, you have a drop-down menu, which will let you choose whether it's it's the zero DJI avatar, BFHD compatible or Betaflight HD compatible. So because we are using the Walksnail avatar, we have to choose avatar as our OSD, and then we just have to choose the OSD. Um, items here on the side but for now we'll just leave it like default most important is we choose which type of um, uh, goggles we are using so we just have to save it okay and then moving on to the other tabs let's strip no, we're not using it sensors so that will show you all the sensors you have so accelerometer magnetometer then that will display all your sensors all right so um, black box so in black box this is a page where you want to record your flight logs here in black box so we will not set up on that one and uh, we will just set it up later and then the last tab will be the cli page which is like more on the programming page but yeah so that is that's it for now. We are all done with the flashing of INAV into the drone. That is just the basic of um, how you flashed, how are you going to flash INAV into your drone. So in the next video, we will discuss on uh, fine tuning, or we will have to initially fly our drone and and look for the, the default tune if it needs to be uh, fine-tuned or can we fly with the default tune or do we need to, to tune it more do we need to change some settings so that is that will be in the next video guys so in the part three of the video but for now this is just basically an overview on how you install or flush the INAV into a newly built drone okay so thanks guys for watching and until the next video have a good day and thank you very much